Hello, and thank you for joining me again on Run Level Zero. This week I was looking at DistroWatch Weekly, and there, there have been several new distributions added to their waiting list. On that list is Just Browsing, and this one caught my eye. I want to take a look at that with you today. Just Browsing is a live CD based on Arch. You will not find an installer on this system because it, it was designed to be used solely from a live environment. I really like how this how this system is laid out and how it's made. There's there's some interesting features here that I haven't run into before. Let's see. We'll start with what is just browsing. It's a bootable Linux live CD. It does not make any changes to the existing operating system on the computer. When this thing boots, you will not have any access to the hard drive of your host system. So that's kind of interesting. It's designed with old machines in mind, and it, it does. It, folks, this thing runs really light. It's really quick, very responsive. And again, it's based on Arch, which is quick enough in its own right. <laughs> Even their website, I wanted to point out to you, you notice there's this panel this is actually from their website. You go to DistroWatch and it's not there, just browsing homepage, there it is. There are several things on this page. Um, you click on the network applet and it actually gives you links to the packages that they use for the uh, Just Browsing Live CD. If you click on the, say, the Chrome icon, it takes you to GitHub where you can download their Chrome profile and likewise with Firefox. There are a couple of web applications linked on their website and as you'll see this is actually mimics the the panel that's in the Just Browsing live distro. I thought that was neat. I haven't seen that before. Looking at the page there are several tabs across the top. We're going to go over to the advanced page because this has some good information for us especially regarding the desktop environment that's used in Just Browsing. It says Just Browsing uses the lightweight i3 window manager. I haven't seen this before uh, to keep the desktop experience uncluttered and without window borders. They do use a desk bar to display their time and date and that's what this is going to look like as a desk bar. And everything is vi visible. There are several web apps <clears throat> and these are the web apps that can be launched from the bar and we're going to get into those in just a minute this i3 window manager it really threw me off to begin with I haven't seen it before it is a tabbed window manager and we're gonna take a peek at that That that's really pretty cool so let's fire this thing off and show you what you get if you're curious I am running Makulu Linux 4.4 XFCE I've really been impressed by that distro so let's kick tick off just browsing it is running in a virtual with all my virtuals I've given it two gigabytes of RAM and two dedicated processors just so everything is kept on an even platform for testing but this is the just browsing boot screen at the boot screen you have the option to boot into the Firefox profile the Chrome profile they also have included profiles for VirtualBox and VMware so since we are in a virtual I'm gonna fire off the VirtualBox this thing boots pretty quick. You know, Arch is known for, for being light on its feet anyway, but I really like this i3 window manager. It is an auto logon, and as soon as this comes up, you can see that was actually pretty quick. Nice boot screen. It automatically, since the, the VMware, or sorry, the VirtualBox version, defaults to the Firefox web browser, and it launches it by default. So this is that i3 window manager. You can see there are no borders. It's giving you everything up in full screen. Now we are going to move back and forth here a little bit. Looking at this, let's go back and take a peek at that uh, that web page. I want to show you a few things they have in common. They have several bookmarks um, that they have 
pre-installed and, and I really like how they do this on the on their web page everything is up front everything is transparent they show you what what you get in the system again this is that advanced tab at the top of the uh, just browsing web page here they have included under both profiles the Chrome and the Firefox they've included several helpful uh, bookmarks and they're categorized toolbars art cloud music shopping social and TV so that they put a lot of common things that, that users will need right at their fingertips since we're looking at Firefox let's take a peek at their extensions and I really like how they had this website set up if you uh, I'm gonna shift right click so open it a new tab if you have any questions about their extensions you can take a look at them here and it will actually take you to the add-on page so I, I thought that was pretty cool you can actually replicate their profiles on your system if you like what they do on the live CD but you have several ad blocking utilities a few plugins flashes there they've removed Google Hangouts from Firefox and Chrome apparently they used to have them there there's a PDF plugin under tools there's add to search bar click to play manager there's a proxy a uh, offline QR generator screen grab utility turn lights off and what that's pretty cool that's web of trust to see if it is a, if it's a trusted website uh, for the Windows or for the window user interface there's a download manager uh, menu editor you know there, there's several things in here uh, under Chrome you can see that they've kept it very similar uh, PDF viewer and flash plug-in for the Chrome as well as ad block flash free to control flash on web uh, web pages again the same proxy duck duck fallback and duck duck go for Chrome these are plugins you know since Chrome uses its Google's product so it's going to use Google search by default this allows you to use the more privacy centric duck duck go uh, within the Chrome environment and then there are several tools including uh, add this let's see what that does haven't seen that before share translate bookmark print and more okay cool let's see uh, there's a camera utility lets you uh, control your webcam take some funny pictures if you want Chrome to mobile save to drive so yeah they're, they're pretty cool uh, utilities and I like how they've kept it as close as possible across both their browsers we're going to get into that in just a minute as far as the lock sentry alright back down to just browsing so pretty much what you see is what you get this is locked into a more kiosk mode looking at the desktop of course you can't look at the desktop this this is set up even if I come up and I close out uh, Firefox it's going to relaunch in just a moment I cannot right click left click there is no menu button there is no menu context menu you don't interact with the system other than through the web browser and their a desk bar at the bottom so this was really set up for a kiosk machine or a just simple web centric machine so if you have a say a house full of guests and you don't want them messing with your computer but they want to get online you can pop in this live CD and that's all they'll be able to access is the web or if you have say a, a, a school library you know some some machines that are provided for uh, employees customers or you know the general public to get online and and use the internet but you don't want them really interacting with the host computer this would be a good option this this is something that's locked down you can give them full access to the internet to their web apps but they can't mess with the, with the computer itself also if you're if you uh, th this is a pretty cool concept because you can take this a step further there is a developer version that you can download and there are several uh, customizable versions on their website go back over there for just a moment let's see 
you can set up customized localizations, key maps. Here you go. There are some developer editions that you can download if you want to get in there and do some tweaking and then remaster it on your own. You can do that. So if you wanted to download this thing and let's see, there's also another one, a remastering, and they, they actually on their websites have video tutorials on how to use these as far as like making customized ISOs. Uh, if you don't like uh, Chrome or, or Firefox, say you wanted to use Opera and Cupzilla, you can do that. They show you how to do that. And what I think is really neat about that is that you could download this thing. Say you have a, uh, say you have a, you work for a company and you have people that go on the road a lot, and you use Microsoft Office Suite. You have, you know, your folks use Microsoft Outlook. Well, there's that well, on the Exchange servers. You have that Microsoft or uh, that uh, Outlook Web Access (OWA) where your employees can can hit that web server and access their uh, their email from outside the network. Well, you could come in and take something like this, just browsing, uh, customize Firefox to work with your OWA, add the OWA links if you have uh, cloud storage or cloud computing at, at your company or school or what have you, place of business. Uh, you, you can put in those web links and then remaster it, give your folks a live CD, and they can access their, their work stuff and, and you've already configured it for them. So it's locked down and, and they have all their links and everything they need right at their fingertips. You know, no one's calling you up at, at 8 o'clock at night because they're trying to work late. You know, how do I get get to my web access? You can use something like this. So that's that's pretty cool. Okay, let's go back and look at Just Browsing again. Pretty much, folks, what you see is what you get. This is a fairly well locked down system. Even though this booted into the Firefox profile by default, you can see the little Chrome icon on the on the desk bar. You click that, and it's going to switch you over to the Chrome profile. Now you see, I did just lose my full screen experience. There's nothing with uh, with just browsing. That's just a quirk in, v in uh, VirtualBox. So if you're running it in a virtual and you do run into this, it's easy to fix. All you do is you go down to View. Exit full screen, view, put it back in full screen, and you're good to go again. So this is pretty cool. These web apps they have on the bottom, if you take, hit the notes, it's going to open in a new tab. You have a web-based uh, uh, text editor there. There's a web-based calculator. There's a timer, a stopwatch and an egg timer. Email will link you over to Gmail, and Wage Clock will actually take you. Allow you to, I guess, if you want to figure out what your paycheck is going to be, you can you can set that up. You have your localization options, your volume control. Now I'm going to open up this volume control and show you. This is what we we're talking about. That tabbed. Uh, tabbed window manager. You can see it just opened up the volume control, but it actually opened it in another tab across the top. So Google Chrome is still here. See? You didn't lose anything. So there you go. Your network manager is here. So any new windows, if I go to configure VPN, well that's just a little one, but if I if I opened up another window you know, it would show up up here as a tabbed window. So if I Alt F4, it's going to shut down that uh, that volume control and give me back my primary window. So that, that's that's pretty neat. You always have that full screen experience, and there's no need for a a uh, a list in your in your bar down here of what windows you have open because they're going to be open in tabs across the top. And really, you're not going to have that much open anyway because very minimal access is allowed to this system. You get the option of locking, rebooting, and powering down your system. This is pretty cool, too. Back over to the website for a moment. Scroll back up. I want to show that to you. It's pretty interesting, this, this live system. So this uses Lock Sentry. You, uh, I'm sorry, it's i3 lock spy. It's a fork of the lock i3 lock screen. 
Uh, modifications include util utilizing W bar to offer shutdown and reboot buttons at the top of the screen. So we're going to see that in a moment. And a common word is selected and presented to the user as a one-time password prior to locking the screen uh, for use as a password. So that's that's pretty cool. We're going to take a peek at that. Also, if you your user does lock the screen, if they have a webcam and somebody tries to log in and gives it the wrong uh, the wrong password, it'll actually take a picture of the individual so you know how many failed logon counts and who tried to do it. So I thought that was pretty cool. I might play around with that on my uh, on my regular computer. So let's take a peek. Let's lock this screen. So it gives me the password is detail. Okay, so we're going, or you can option to blank it. So let's lock it, and there is our lock screen. So from here we can reboot or shut down. Let's see. Just browsing lock, typed in password, so we're going to type in detail, enter, and we're back in. So, password is mind. So I'm going to lock it. I'm going to type in dude. Verifying. Uh-oh. Wrong. So, let's give it the right password. I'm not seeing anything here that's saying where the... Uh, oh, you cannot minimize either. That's pretty cool. Not seeing anything in here that's saying where we had our failed logon attempt. Not sure where that's going to be stored at. But anyway, I, I really like this. I think this offers a lot. There, like I said, there's a lot going on in this small package. And uh, let me know what you think. Download it, give it a try. I, I see a lot of, of potential with something like this. Well, this has been run, this has been in at zero for run level zero. Uh, thank you for joining me today, and I hope to be with you soon for another video.